Hey, thanks for clicking. Last week I put out a video talking about a deep dive I did on Adam Sessler and about how far he's fallen from who he used to be or, or at least who I used to think he was. And a lot of people watched it. So naturally now I'm going to do a deep dive, a much more pleasant deep dive into Morgan Webb. Not just because of her being Adam Sessler's former ex-play partner, but also because of Frost naming her in her rant. Did I do this because I found Morgan Webb's photo shoot for FHM and her interview with Kevin Pereira? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay, enough intro. Let's get into it. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Okay, so that's objectively true. Women don't exist to be nice on the eyes for anyone. Oxygen doesn't exist so we can breathe it. The sun doesn't shine to make us warm. And so this is the thing, YouTube and television, where Frosk is choosing to work and where Morgan Webb was successful, are visual mediums. This isn't radio. It's not an audio-only podcast. This is not a book. It's a visual medium. Try to find me a cable TV host from the mid-2000s who was not nice on the eyes. Male or female, go look. They probably exist. I'm sure there's some but I can show you 10 for every one you can show me. So I wanna say this and it's important that this does not excuse whatever abuse Frost received for being on TV. It doesn't excuse any sexist, anti-women comments that she received because of course that's wrong, full stop. I haven't had anyone actually come out and say that that's right, I haven't seen that. But everything on TV or on the internet is judged by how pleasing it is to the eyes, whether that be the hosts, their clothes, or even the graphics before the show, the couch you're sitting on, the color of the carpet, all of it is judged visually, whether or not it pleases the viewer. But it's far from the only factor being considered. Morgan Webb wasn't and isn't successful because she was nice on the eyes, even though she was and is. Morgan Webb wasn't ashamed of being attractive. Why should she be? And neither was G4. Uh, we're doing a little shoot for November issue of FHM. It's the games and technology issue, so that's where I come in. It's for the November issue of FHM. We're shooting Morgan Webb, who is a gaming junkie. She loves video games. She reviews video games on her show. And, you know, we just thought that she'd be a great addition to the issue. So I'm just going to pause this for a second and ask you to take a look at the top right-hand corner of your screen. What do you see? G4. I just think that this is a phenomenal shoot for us. Um, you know, Morgan is loves video games our reader loves video games you know fhm gets letters all the time from readers wanting to know you know hear more about video games and they just love video games they love sexy women morgan is absolutely beautiful and i think that when you put a, a beautiful woman in a bikini in front of video game monitors it's sure to be a good seller Yeah, every issue that we do at FHM, you know, has a theme, whether it's the lingerie issue or the bikini issue, but I think that a technology and video game issue is just right up our readers' alley. You know, we obviously wanted to shoot Morgan in some type of a tech gaming approach. We decided to build a set that's a little more old school, a little more sort of sci-fi looking. Seeing hot women in bikinis, in front of video games and reading about how girls can kick their butts in video games, I think that uh, I think our readers going to respond well. For you, Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She didn't exist for that, but she was that. She was okay with that. In fact, she was proud of that. And that was part of why people liked her. And that's okay. And it was fine with G4. So who has the problem here? What else should you know about Morgan Webb? She had a monthly column in FHM Magazine called Tips from the Gaming Goddess. 
And oh yeah, was she ever. She's a Canadian, so that's almost always a plus. She's been married to the same very lucky guy since 2006. And that's enough about him. A very short perusal of her social media reveals someone who, well, isn't wishing death on her family members, so that's a big improvement over her former co-host. Morgan Webb was also featured in FHM Magazine's Top 100 Hottest Women of the Year three years in a row. I'll admit the posing isn't the most creative. She was also featured in Maxim Magazine. And okay, this is going to sound made up, but trust me on this one. In 2004, she won a contest for Tech TV's Sexiest Techie. But that's not the part that sounds made up. As part of that contest, Morgan Webb was offered a photo shoot in Playboy magazine. And guess what she did? She turned it down, but wait for it. She was very flattered by the offer. Flattered. Not offended. Not insulted. Flattered. How dare you! Oh, how I miss you, 2000s. After the much better incarnation of G4 finally folded, she was a host at Microsoft's E3 press conference in 2013, and she guest-hosted Bethesda's 2015 and 2016 presentations with her former co-host, Adam Sessler, who hasn't lost it yet, but he's drifting in that direction. Another thing that separates Morgan Webb from her modern reimaginings is she's actually a gamer. I don't mean pundit or reporter or reviewer, She's a gamer. And now, how do I know that? Since 2017, she's been employed by Bonfire Studios, an independent video game company. What I will say, though, is that I looked into Bonfire Games, and, well, I can't see any games they've created or anything they're actually working on. There's some nice photos of them at the beach, but reportedly they're working on an MMO, but there's been no trailer, footage, anything released on it. But that's not her fault. Well, probably not. She showed up for the 2020 G4 reunion, which served as a soft launch for this new abomination they're calling G4. She was her lovely witty self, and thank God she's not on that show now. Rumor has it they did make a run at Olivia Munn, but her asking price was too high, so I guess they went with Frost. Good call, Blair Herder. It's kind of too bad that this didn't happen where Olivia could get to work with Frost. Olivia could be her lovely self, and Frost could just cry herself to sleep at night. Okay, I'm guilty. I got sidetracked there for a minute. Back to Morgan. When she worked on X-Play, they had a very, very small budget. They didn't have a team of writers working for them, but they produced more than 1,300 episodes. That's a lot of games to review. And there's no reason to think that she didn't play the games she reviewed. In fact, you can see her often talking about games that are coming out that she's excited to review and get a chance to play. And she's disappointed when she doesn't get to review the games she wants to. Growing up, she wasn't allowed to watch TV. So what did she do? Well, she had an Atari, and she played games. The game Combat was her favorite. And as technology moved forward, she became a giant Nintendo nerd. And now to wrap things up. Not only was Morgan Webb nice on the eyes, but she was very, very good at her job. Or in the immortal words of our friend Frosk, Both things can be true! Thanks for sticking to the end. Please like and subscribe, and enjoy the interview. gentlemen, boys and girls, one of my favorite folks in the industry, uh, definitely top five outside of the industry. She is a beacon of light and adorableness. Uh, she is knowledgeable. She is a professional through and through. She is a lover of limon flavored Cheetos. Ladies and gentlemen, Morgan Webb is here. Oh my God, that wasn't enough applause. I'd be blushing, but uh, you're wearing a lot of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe that we can permeate those layers. We can shine through. How are you, Miss Webb? I've been doing really well, actually. Um, I get constant questions on Twitter, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. And I'm like, I don't have a good answer for you, but I'm not, <laughs> like, I am doing things. I'm uh, enjoying life. Well, it, it's, it's hard because, I mean, as being on TV and sort of being that face is not necessarily, as you know, I, I think all it's cracked up to be. And so... It also isn't something that I really sought out. And so, you know, I ended up in this situation where I loved the people I worked with. I loved X-Play and the developers and video games. And, and that was great. 
being sort of a known figure and being Morgan Webb in quotes mm-hmm. wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Well, what uh, you, you take me back and you'll have to pardon some of my ignorance. It was You don't know my entire life history. God damn it. I know what Google and Wikipedia will allow me to know. <laughs> and that's about it. That's that's what I know. Um, it was screensavers, right? Yeah, was it, it was, Call for Help at the time or what? No, it wasn't no, Call for no, Help. No, 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 no. So Screensavers and Call for Help were different right. entities. Different shows yes. on tech TV, up in SF. Right. But and how I did... got hired on the Screensavers as a sort of research person. I had been doing IT and some programming right out of college. The bubble had just collapsed. Mm-hmm. It was a miracle I had gotten sort of a job in that industry. Anyway, the company closed, I think, that December. I temped for a while, and that May I got a job on the Screensavers kind of doing technical research. So if they were going to do a segment on video cards, I would do all the research about the different, not product testing, but like sort of the background of all the video cards, that kind of thing. Right. If we're going to have six cards on the show, who's the best in breed? We need our Matrox card and then we need our other card. Yeah. And I wouldn't choose necessarily the benchmarking or the testing, Mm -hmm. but maybe the history of that video card. It's the third iteration and this company's done this other thing before. This company's known for that. Just that kind of research. Did you want to shoot yourself in the throat immediately or did that happen after a few weeks of that gig? No, I actually... (laughs) 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 I... You, I mean, you know me. You and I, you and I have known each other for a very long time. Like, yeah. I'm kind of the quiet type who would rather be sitting behind a computer. So I actually really did like that. Mm-hmm. Well, was, what was the first then? Well, first, more importantly, what color okay. was your hair at the time? Blonde. Was it the bleach blonde look? It was the look? bleach blonde, the love short that look. bleach I love, blonde. I love them all. I love all looks. You could go through the that rainbow bright there. phase. That was good hedging. No, and I love I them liked, all, but it's I true. I liked the blonde short. It's funny because it's totally tangential and not related to anything, but we have an hour, right? So. We have more than enough time. Okay, we can swear, right? Uh, no, whoa, you, ooh, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Ting. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Drop the C-bomb. B- most people don't know that that's your favorite word and you use it like Valley Girls say like. Oh, yeah. I use it as the, it's just replace it in there. Um, now I'm not going to drop it in. Just, Damn it. Just, I was, I was, just there was a moment where I was like, bitch. oh my God, are you going to say it? This is going to be amazing because there's going to be a Morgan Webb soundboard and it's just going to be a big cunt button. That's it. Yeah, no, I know. All right. So I've seen, yeah. We'll see if it leaks yeah. out. Okay, okay. So your tangent, is this about hair color? This is about hair. I don't usually talk about hair that much, but you know, it's funny when people come up to you, they usually have a favorite hairstyle, <laughs> Right. which by the way, I don't really care which favorite hairstyle that you like this is important knowledge this is my preference on your hair i need to share it with you so you can acknowledge me that i have developed feelings about the way you look and certain phases of that right yeah so most often i get i liked you better uh as a blonde that's mostly what i get right uh well first i get you look taller on tv then I get, you don't really play video games, do you? And then I get, I liked you better as a blonde. Wow. Neither, none of those statements, like, how do you respond to any of those statements? Yeah, with a swift kick to their <laughs> testicles or their or their lady parts, if so. I'm imagining this is mostly dudes who, who say that when they oh, come yeah, up. Oh, yeah, they and... come up to you. And usually it's like, you know, because you go to these conventions and everyone goes to the bar afterwards. Mm-hmm. And so my response probably depends on how many beers I am into the evening. <laughs> right. How, how saucy have you? Have you ever just punched a fan or cursed um, one out? think anyone would notice if I punched them. <laughs> Be like, oh, the slight breeze came in. <laughs> My mustache think, moved a bit. That's about. I don't think I'd know how. What? What but is I it could about? Be way cattier. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can be mean, way meaner with your words. At least that's what I tell myself. Well, what is it about? Because I'll get that sometimes too, and I I, I don't know people, if it's what as. What do people say to you? I'm curious. I get a lot of the. I thought you'd be taller, or you look bigger on air. You know, right. like you look like you might have had a muscle, but you're not. You're a twig of a man. <laughs> Why would you, you know, say that a to breeze somebody? can shatter you. I don't know, and that's what I was gonna get at. Like, what is it in some? I understand, like, oh, that someone's unfiltered, probably honest. Their shotgun gut reaction is, right. oh, I thought you'd be this. But in no situation can I understand why they would communicate that info other than there's just no man behind the wheel that's there to pull the lever, that's there to e- grab right. the e-brake and say, hold on a second. Like, I think people get nervous, maybe, which is sure. weird that anybody would get nervous meeting me. I mean, I'm kind of, it's kind of a big deal. But. I, ju- I pissed myself three times since you got here, and I know you well. So, no, you are very intimidating, no, but Ms. It's, Webb. But it's funny because you don't think of that. Usually you're just like, oh, I'm going to meet this person. He's coming up to say hi, and right. then he says something. I would say... I would say as high as 90% of the time, somebody says one of those things to me. Great. And the, well, the, the initial, the, having a favorite hairstyle. Okay. Yeah. I get, oh, I, I guess also, I get that. I and... think it's like, I, I've been watching you. I've been a fan right. since you were on the screensavers. It's, I think it's that almost like 
legitimacy. Right. You know, I remember you thing? went, because yes. I'll get that like, hey, I remember when exactly. you were in head to toe jean jackets and you still had that Prince Albert jingling and I, we could hear it and I missed those piercings. And I'm like, okay, you're uh, establishing that funny that viewership, was. right? You're establishing yeah. longevity. That's yeah. fine. But the, you're not a real gamer. Really? I don't know how, I have no polite response to that statement. So usually I'm kind of mean and I'm working on that and I don't know what to <laughs> So I'm taking suggestions. So if anybody has a suggestion that they would like to bring me, just maybe send it to me on Twitter. I would say show of hands in this room, but no one's going to give you a polite suggestion here. <laughs> like there's no way. And no, no, don't solicit real advice on Twitter. No one's going to have anything good to say about that. You probably think I should have learned my lesson by now. Although I actually asked, you know, I've asked for game recommendations and that kind of thing before. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, for like iPad games or something. And people have given me that is recommendations. That is true. That is true. Okay, so yeah. uh, so take me back the blonde hair okay. phase, which I think is everybody in this room's favorite. Morgan Webb, I, were you taller then? Because you look taller on TV. I was anyway, taller then. clearly you didn't play games then because you don't. But we're back at that time. You're okay. the you're the research uh, assistant. The research did, was there a title? Was there a department? Uh, um, associate producer. Okay. Oh, cool. so you're an associate producer yeah. helping put the information together for these segments. Correct. At what point were they like? All right, Morgan Webb, get in front of camera two. Or was it an accident? Was it organic? I started producing these Windows tips where i know it's funny now right? i love it <laughs> i love that there was a t i loved screensavers yes. i was a huge fan so i loved that that like talking about a show where people could call in live and be like i'm having problems with my printer and it's like okay let's dedicate 10 minutes of television right now no. to fixing that and That's leo great. leo was amazing it was amazing to sort of work under leo and learn from leo because especially starting out Nothing bad was going to happen when Leo was there because right. there was not going to be any silence no matter what. And if the studio exploded, that's cool. Leo had it all under control. Right, right. So, you know, it made it very relaxing in a way to kind of do it. And, you know, everybody, when you're doing live TV, especially when you're first starting out, you have failures and sometimes you do great and sometimes you don't do great. And, you know, you're only as good as your last hit. So, you know, it took a long time of learning. But so I would do these Windows tips where I would, I, I of course couldn't remember one off the top of my head, but. In case you accidentally hid your start bar, here's how to get it back. Something like that? Or yeah, was it more? It tended to be like registry hacks. Sort oh, of a shit. little more complicated okay. than, um, I remember we did one on NetSend. Um, which was hilarious, which we were playing with. And we sent a message to the entire company and IT was, it came running over. We're like, oh, that was our bad. <laughs> they weren't proud. There wasn't a trophy for doing it. No, they were like, I thought I was like, well, first of all, you enabled this. You did not disable this feature. Right. I just happened to find okay. it. <laughs> Probably not the thing to say to IT. It's like, first of all, you guys fucked up at your job. All I did was put a giant spotlight on it and let everybody know that you're inept. Probably not. <laughs> to like every IP address in the entire <laughs> yeah. building. Yeah. Probably not yeah. the best way to handle that it. That was a Kevin. That was a me and Kevin Rose exploit. Love it. Love it. So Good you were time. doing that. But then they yeah. said, hey, Morgan, you're doing these things. Do them on air. Yeah, I mean, as you know, the show at that time was an hour and a half, and an hour and a half of live content every single day is a beast. Like, you can't come up with enough content. Mm -hmm. So it was just basically like, you girl, come here, talk <laughs> on TV. I mean, literally anybody on set, anybody who walked by the building was like, what are you doing right now? You have five minutes to present a, how to install a hard drive? Yeah, right. cool. You look like you might have a story or something. Get in front of this lens now. Go. I love that, though. Yeah, so, Did you hate was, it at first, though? No. No, because it was fun. I was talking about technology. I was hanging out with people. It was a really... Tech TV was a really special, beautiful time. There's mm -hmm. almost nothing... Like, it was a very special community of people. that People who were there still mourn it and love it and remember it. I think mostly because it was so amazing and it felt like it was cut off in its prime I'll tell you, or the people sort of the who weren't there who were just fans of it on television yeah. still mourn it but it's in all caps letters to me <laughs> almost every day on the internet as but the man who murdered tech tv which i had it was nothing you. to do it with it was you it was it was me i saw you guys having fun out there and as a 19 year old pa in los angeles <laughs> i decided to flex my muscles and say shut it down no fun for them but but realistically <laughs> As much as people sort of loved it, but it, it was niche. And it came down to the fact that what did people really want to watch, as much as they said they wanted to watch the screensavers right. every single day, what were they actually watching? What, I don't know whatever people were watching. I don't really watch that much. No, I think, look, I think <laughs> like, for that like, audience, if you were into that, 
you were a very specific audience, right. which is great. That's awesome. But that was not awesome 10, 15 years ago. Right. It had to be broad. It, had, it is broadcast for a reason. Had that been coming about now online, that network would have flourished and been more than sustainable as a digital play right. where people could interact with their fans and their friends and just push the show directly to you. That would have been marvelous. But at the time, even when G4 first launched, G4 was awesome if you were a gamer, but it was so – you had to really fucking live and bleed pixels – for it to exist and work, and so they tried to broaden it out, and that's when things get messed around with and things and, explode. And now that content does exist on the internet, and mm -hmm. that's great, and that's there for people. But we're all nostalgic. We all think back on times and forget the bad parts and remember only the good parts. Totally. And part of it was that, you know, we were all like 25, and being 25 is kind of awesome. You know? Yeah, especially when you're 25 and empowered with a live television show yeah. in the middle of fucking San Francisco with all sorts of cool people. Yeah, I could afford an apartment, you know what I mean? I mean, not by myself, like with a lot of other people. But, you know, right. I had a place to live in the city, which was fantastic. And, you know. Did any of those roommates at any time pee into a mail slot? I would not know. Okay, just curious. That yeah. wasn't a specific reference to no. a specific person who we're mm -hmm. not going to call out on air. I was nope. just curious if in the time that you had any roommates or friends in San Francisco, did one of them get so plastered that on the way home from a party, they lifted up someone's <laughs> mail slot and then urinated into that person's house. I it was just a random, completely weird question and story to ask. I have absolutely no idea what you're Me neither, about. and that's why I'm glad I brought that up. Okay, so <laughs> that's how we got our start. Come on down to LA. Yes. Do the G4 madness. Yes. I think we all know what happened there, at least from a 10,000 foot view. I don't really know your perspective on it. What happened with the end of, of the X-Play days? Was it, was it sad? Was it crazy? Were you ready to be done with it? You know, we had gone through a lot of changes. I think there was a time when every kind of new person, new management, new producer wanted to kind of change the entire thing. I think we were best when it was uh, when we were being ignored. Nobody thought that we were going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. They're like, "Here's your barn, kids. Have a good time." And it actually kind of came out as a really popular show. Mm -hmm. So um, it had gone through a lot of iterations. I do miss the people. On the other hand, I still have the people. I still see the people. So you know, it is what it is. Like nobody owes you a job. Nobody owes you a living. Nobody. You can't make somebody do that if you don't want to. And you know, a lot of people say to me, like, just do X play, but on the internet. I'm like, that doesn't really sound that fun for me. I feel like there's a next chapter in my life. And whether it's on air or in public, I'm not exactly sure. Or whether it's private, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that is yet. Um, I am in a good place that I don't have to kind of take the first weird crap offer that comes my way. And I'm not really in any hurry to, you know, to do that. So, you know, I, I think... It was sad. I think it was a show that meant a lot to me and a lot to the people who worked on it and a lot to a lot of fans. But, you know, there comes a point when people would come up to you and be like, I grew up watching you or I wish you were my mom. And I'm like, you know, what? I think it's it's time. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were my mom. I started getting that. And I'm like, uh, no, you don't, because I know what that game is rated and I would not let you play it. <laughs> You're like, I'm a far more responsible parent than your oh, parents will ever be. Yes. Let me tell you. I know how to use parental controls. <laughs> Also, mommy doesn't want to share her Xbox, so you exactly. can, if you want to go buy an Xbox, you can play. <laughs> yeah, you don't get a login on, on our Xbox One, no. You get the hand-me-down 360. You're in another room with that. You enjoyed last gen. Um, I, you know, for me, I imagine the, that the, you know, when it's all done, it, it's been off the air. You've been out of there for, what, a year and a half? It's been a year. year and change? A year. A year. Okay, so a year now. Uh, has it's it, still on air though, so you can catch it. Are they still repeating it? Yeah, and it's really sad when I will get a message on Twitter that's like, "When are you going to re review the new Aww. GTA?" And I'm always like, "Oh, buddy, I got some bad news for Why you." Why are you guys still talking about Grand Theft Auto Four? That's like so old. These guys don't know anything about video games. <laughs> she really doesn't play them. Ah. Now I imagine it's been you in a uh, a Batman onesie, eating Captain Crunch, spilling the milk onto yourself. There's a lot of problems with that. First of all. Not the biggest Batman fan. Okay, so I got the onesie wrong. It's definitely been no, no. a onesie, though. It's is a it onesie. Adventure Time onesie? It's just is it not a, a Batman onesie. A Pikachu? What is it? Pikachu? I just came at the wrong time for Pokemon. So, like, I was just, it was too old when it came out. So, like, the babies played with Pokemon. Oh, all those babies want you to be their mom, though. And I can't, they're all crying so loudly now. <laughs> I can't sure even I hear you. I'm sure I would love it. I'm sure I would love it. <laughs> well, like, just play. I'm like, it's just too, it's gone no, okay. you, the, the you, ship is sailed exactly it's fine i got other things what is it play. what has it been since i mean you mentioned that you're in a, a privileged spot which i think is a phenomenal place to be in where you're not 
dying for the next meal. You right. don't have to take a gig just to take the gig. Um, have you been actually enjoying that time and reflecting or have you been plotting the next thing or are you just truly in the moment and going with it? I do have some stuff in the works and I'm not really going to talk about it only because it's like you don't want to come in here and be like, I'm writing a book. And then <laughs> right. of course, like in Hollywood, nothing ever actually happens. Totally. So there's probably like a 0% chance that anything is actually going to happen, but I am doing work towards things that aren't going to happen. So I don't really know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> You're actively taking steps towards future failures, which is amazing. That's great. <laughs> like, I totally you don't am. want your you don't want your Daikatana or your Duke Nukem forever. Yeah. You don't want to come on something like this where twelve people are going to hear you say, "The book's coming out," people. along with the Blu-ray. Yeah, and like three of them are going to see you. Believe it or not, these cameras are real. These exist <gasps> in a space. No one watches it. I'm sorry, but I'm really. It's really good to hang out with you. So yeah, thank no, you for it's being good. here. I've, it's been a while. Um, what what is yeah. so future? Morgan uh, might have a book. Might have a TV thing. <laughs> might have a have a what? What's future Morgan doing? Um, so future, you might see future Morgan maybe on okay. um, pictures or you know moving pictures of her. At some like point. an animated GIF or uh, <laughs> something more substantial, something yeah, with audio. Can you make one of those for me? That'd be great. We can definitely do Sweet. it. Sweet. Yeah, we can start a meme for sure. <laughs> Uh, are um, you so playing I games? Am, I am working on stuff. Uh, I do get a lot of tweets, as I said, like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, eh, nothing. I can tell you 140 characters. Right. Um, I'm actually, I am playing games. I'm playing Hearthstone, which I, I don't know why I said that was self-loathing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, which, <laughs> so, because uh, I haven't really been playing a damn thing. So which, oh, one's, which one's Hearthstone? Is it's that... Blizzard's uh, free-to-play Oh, is card that the card game? game? Yeah, it's I've pretty seen, fun. I've mostly seen women play that on Twitch streams. That's my knowledge of that game. It's because yeah. they're always like the number one room is some very attractive woman on a webcam playing that game. And I can't understand the game from what she's doing, but that's what I've seen of it. Well, it's in open beta right now, so you could just download it for free. And okay. there's a tutorial that'll take you 15 minutes or 20 minutes to kind of get through, and you'll get it. You'll like it or you don't. I don't know. Did you play Magic? Uh, I, yes. I did briefly in like sixth or seventh grade, and okay. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah. it. I just didn't get hardcore into it. Right. I played a lot of Magic in high school, but that's fine. How old are you again? What? How old are you again? I'm 31. Okay, we're not that far I'm apart. I'm an old man. Um, we're not that far apart then. You're 27 years old. I know, right? And you just turned it, so don't even pretend I'm like... I'm 26 next year. Oh my no, God, it's great. <laughs> You're going the, the Benjamin Button route, which no, is very, no. very common. I am 35. I am proud of that. I don't think that there's... We, we sort of worship youth for some strange reason, and no. I don't agree with that at all. Well, because it's sexy and intelligent and fun, but other than that, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, get, I, I couldn't... <laughs> Uh, uh, what, the, what the hell are we talking about? Hearthstone. Oh, Hearthstone! God, I am I am on a tangent today. That's what that's you what happens here. You give me a microphone here. and I'm like blah 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 me me me. Well, that's you're the guest. That's literally your job is to sit here today. <laughs> your unpaid job is to sit here. I was hoping it was going to be in a Batman onesie with some cereal, but it, it's to sit here and talk about you because that's right. what we want to hear about. So Hearthstone, yes, yeah, so recommend. Hearthstone, yeah, it's it's free. The beta is open now, so okay. it. it you know. What's the model going to be for that? Like, is it going to be now we're going to sell you the game, or the game's going to be free to play, but then we're going to sell you add-on cards or packs or? So what it is uh, currently, and I don't actually expect this to change, is you get you play the game for free. You can play the game for free for a while with the cards that they give you. Like they they match you up well so that they don't send you against somebody with crazy cards. Okay. Now you can earn cards. So you earn cards by kind of entering tournaments. You sort of earn gold. And you can also, if you get cards that you don't want, you can destroy those cards and get gold, you know, sort of Smelt them down for something. Back for them or whatever. Yeah. So if you keep playing matches against people, you can earn every card. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So if you have the time to do that, you can totally earn it. Because I, I don't like those games where it's like, if you pay, you yeah, get Yeah, free this. to play, pay to win. Right, yeah. exactly. So you can, you can totally earn everything. You can pay to get the packs in advance of whatever. It's like free gold. I am the girl who is kind of busy, so I may have paid for a pack of cards or two. Click accelerated <laughs> gameplay. Thank you. Is it where is it the kind of thing where you can build the deck that you have and go for I'm going to be more aggressive or defensive? Or? Yeah. So there's also different characters so that you can um, like maybe you want to be a hunter, maybe you want to be a rogue, and they're going to have different strategies and different cards, and then you can have different strategies within that cards. It's a game that it doesn't have. It's not like the deepest card game in the world. Like Magic: The Gathering is much more complicated. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's one of those games where the first few minutes you're like, "This game's dumb. It's so simple," and then you're like, 
but yet I keep getting my ass kicked. So obviously it's not as simple as I think it right. is. I clearly <laughs> haven't figured out the game mechanics yet. Like I haven't, I'm not, yeah, I'm not flipping tables here. Right, exactly. So it's not actually as random or straight. So you build your deck and that kind of thing. So anyway, so it's fun. It's free. People should check it out. Um, Christy Pitchford, who is Randy Pitchford's wife. Yeah. Yes. From Gearbox, right? Yes, yeah. who's fantastic. So um, she and I are like really obsessed with each other like i fucking love her she's the best hi christy um oh we just got a tweet from christy she says hi, <laughs> hi. at morgan that was so quick we are live so that's yes. fantastic um but so she was tweeting about how she's like i just caught 70 percent in lord of the rings like a lord of the rings i just got 100 percent like so i'm following her and i'm just jonesing i'm just sitting there being like i want to get 100 percent or something <laughs> I'm like rocking back and forth and so of course i buy the game because it's whatever it's nothing now because it's been out forever sure and so i just sit there and i sometimes when i because the game's so easy and stupid <laughs> it's like okay what's your guilty pleasure game I, right now yeah. it's lego avengers okay. like i fully get how dumb and mindless and perfectly dumb in mind so i was dumb. hung so over dumb. last night or yeah. pretty much all yesterday it wasn't yeah. just the evening the entire day I was hung over as was bria and we just looked at each other's like legos yep, yep. fucking legos. play legos yep so great so you could Whatever. So you feel me. So Legos. <laughs> the problem I'll have with I'm Legos sometimes is that like, they're, they're, I'm not proud of it, but I'm especially not proud of it when I hit a moment where I'm like, I don't know what to do. And there are several <laughs> times like in this Avengers game where I'm like, I guess we got to switch to the, to the Mr. The, 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 the whole, they got to go to the thing. You got to yeah. become the thing. And then you have to act, no, we need a gold character to melt this thing. And I'm like, how is an eight-year-old supposed to figure this out? Because Bria and I are slamming our heads together and <laughs> neither of us wants to admit that we don't know how to pass a certain part of a stage. We no, eventually go, go brute force it, but... You, you go ahead. I wouldn't want to take the pleasure away from you by, totally, by letting you do it. Totally use that tactic a thousand times. We're like, I think we need to be... Um, I think we've got to be Hulk for this, but I'm already, uh, I'm already <laughs> anybody else in the game, so uh, why don't you go ahead and switch and do the thing that we need to do? And she's looking at me like, yeah, okay, because okay. she doesn't want to admit defeat. And then we just end up running in circles for like 10 minutes until we accidentally press the right button. Right. That's the saddest part. I would say Lego Lord of the Rings is similar in that it has so many different powers. Right. Like each character has 17 different weird things. Like use so-and-so to plant this. Use so-and-so to light this fire and mm -hmm. then plant the thing. And then, I mean... Yeah, and my friend was like, oh, the replay replayability is amazing. You're going to want to go back and play through it four million times. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm sorry. I want to play through Like, there's nothing exciting about being on level one of a million right. and seeing 13 areas that you can't fucking access until you're halfway through the game. Then I got to yeah. remember to go back and play with a certain character to unlock it. Like, no, there's not enough hours in the damn day. Yeah, we'll see. I'm at probably 25%. I don't think that 100 is in my future. I said to Bria yesterday as we fired up the game. Yeah. I go, how far into this do you think we are, judging by the save file on the PS4? I'm like, right. how far into this? She's like, we've got to be like 80 or 90% done by now. We've been, we've been chipping away at it yeah. since it came out. I was like, yeah, we're 12.3% <laughs> done with this fucking game. And it almost made us not want to play it anymore. Yes. Well, and then you're like, well, I have like a million Lego coins or whatever. <laughs> right. And then you're like, oh, this one character that's like a crap character, like Tom Bombadil or something is like 3 million. Wait, who? Like, Tom Bombadil. Did you read Lord of the Rings? No. Damn it. I, I thought, that was, I thought that was like a texture artist from EA. Like that was like a hidden character. Tom Bombadil is a Who's character. Tom Bombadil? It's just a character from one of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, right, exactly. You don't want Tom uh, Bombadil. I like, don't who want cares? No, I don't. I want Frylock. I want uh, Zangief. Who was in Lord of the Rings? I didn't watch the movies. I didn't even fucking watch that thing. You know why? Because Bye. I have planet Earth. If I want to watch 15 minute shots oh. of fucking forests and cliff sides, I will put on something that's prettier than you that. You only watch the BBC. I don't buy that for a second. You're playing Marvel Avengers and you're yes. too good to watch Lord of the Rings. Not too good. It's just if I have two hours of my life to invest, I will do it on something that's interactive. First of all, it's like probably 12 hours to get through the whole thing. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> I went, Todd White had a Lord of the Rings viewing party. I uh -huh. remember it very well. And I came in, granted, I came in during number two. I didn't see right. number one, but I remember I sat down on a bean bag, I popped a beer, I situated myself. Yeah. And what felt like 25 minutes later, I hadn't heard a single word of dialogue. <laughs> I hadn't seen a single face. I watched, I watched like the tides change in the ocean that was lapping up on the shores of Mordor or whatever. Like there were animals decomposing and flowers blossomed and bloomed, but I didn't see anything. And I just <laughs> couldn't invest that much time into you it. You should really not read the books. Really? Oh, because it's, 
as much detail as there is in the movies, the, like you know how many arrows Legolas has uh, at any given time. Uh, <laughs> and how many lembas, like the elven cakes, you know exactly. What? The lembas, the elven cakes. Are they like hostess cupcakes, but for elves? They're made by elves. Okay. But they last forever and of they're wrapped in leaves. Of course they do. So they're Twinkies, got it. But they, right. But sometimes like if you've been traveling through Mordor for a really long time, they kind of dry out. <laughs> Is that a problem? I didn't know that. Can the ring not well, solve that? Well, if you had read the book... Is that what the ring is about? To add moisture to <laughs> elven cakes and they need it back? It can rehydrate all the crispy cakes? It can make all the food delicious again. Oh, now I get it. Now yeah. I understand it. Yeah, so I don't think you'll like the books at all. I yeah, no, like the books. Like, there's, we only have half a Lembus left and then Sam gave his to Frodo. <laughs> and then... Yes, for real. No. For yeah, like I, thousands but, and thousands and thousands of pages. I, however... Loved I'm it. sure you loved every sentence of detail about it. You wanted to know exactly how they flaked off and what kind of geometric patterns yes. were left in the ground by the flakes. And then after you finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, then there's another like 2,000 page book called The Similarian, I think. I don't. Yeah, good. Did I get that right? Um, no! <laughs> Sorry, well, you're, I'm so really interested. So now I know what I'm going to get you for your birthday. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yes, and then someone get me a lighter so I can torch it right in front of you and just stare hatred into you. You know what the other, other thing is? like yeah. I don't need 40-minute shots of vistas. I just don't fucking need it. I have desktop wallpapers for that. He is a but busy, also, busy man, you guys. Busy, busy, busy. Here's the thing. What, are you, what, what do you have Lasers do? are way fucking cooler than stabs and beards. I'm putting it out there. Sci-fi, no. way cooler than fantasy. No. Always cooler. Magic fantasy is, yes. Fireball, fireball, fire. No, no, no. no. Because magic is bullshit and it never existed and there were never fucking dragons. But in sci-fi, we can, with science, Elon Musk is going to get us to a place where our Teslas fucking hover, we've got plasma swords, and we're fucking space aliens. We will see that day. And that is way more exciting than some bullshit past with your fucking magic missiles and your staves and your fucking unkempt beards. Groom that shit. You're an all-powerful wizard. Why is it going all the way down to your pubic hair? That's disgusting. Maybe he derives power from it. If you give me a lighter <laughs> and a can made. of a lighter and a can of hairspray, I can make you a fireball. They didn't have Aquanet in yielden times. <laughs> all right, there was <laughs> no blacksmith. Staff with... does. <laughs> you think it's an aerosol staff? Yeah. That'd be pretty badass it if it was like the See? whole point of the you staff said was, it was it... badass. <laughs> and then styled. I can't help it. I like the swords and the. Dragon do you like that more so? I do. Like, if you had to choose, though. If I had to choose, would it be futuristic sci-fi matrixy shit, or would it be yield magic missile blacksmithy? Horse armor, arrow to the knee. Uh, it's tough, right? Because yes. I'm right, and you just don't want to say it. No, I, I think I would actually go fantasy if I had to choose. Really? Fortunately, I do not have to choose. So yeah. why 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 is that? I don't know. I just whatever for whatever reason, I'm just more attracted to the swords. And I'm sorry to throw these hard balls no, no, no. at you. And I mean, you is, didn't come on here to get grilled, but I gotta ask the hard hitting questions, I Morgan Webb. I want to live back then because I want to live in the future where they have antibiotics. Right. But also, you want to live on Elysium. Yeah, but also you sort of have this picture of the dystopian future where everything's incredibly smoggy, you can't breathe at all. That's for the 99%. You're way richer and way better than that, Morgan Webb. Come on, you're never, you're going to live above the smog and yes, people are going to yeah. throw stuff at your hoverboard when you but go puttering by them. Fuck them, whatever, they're going to be dead in a week. Thank you. Yeah, okay, fair. Okay, cool, I win. Still Future's dragons, better. Though. Nope.